Exactly 923. A city of San Antonio employee caught on camera throwing down and kicking a man behind City Hall. This is footage of the late February attack. The employee seen throwing down that man by his throat is senior TV video producer Carlos Berlanga. Berlanga later said he reacted this way after the man cursed at him and Berlanga felt threatened. He was suspended 10 days in order to go through anger management after investigators determined this was a, quote, bona fide act of workplace violence. I believe that two weeks unpaid away from the office plus a number of other conditions was a severe punishment. Now Dylan Collier got this video and joins us live. Now what was the city's justification for not firing Berlanga? Uh, well Jeff Coyle said that Berlanga was remorseful. Uh, first and foremost, he realized what he had done was wrong and the, uh, the act itself was not appropriate in the workplace and that he was willing to stay and meet a number of conditions in order to continue being employed by the city of San Antonio, which included going through anger management courses and signing a last chance agreement, which from my understanding from covering uh, police officers and firefighters that get suspended, any kind of rules violation moving forward in the city uh, could fire him and there wouldn't be a chance for, for him to really appeal that. Kind of a one strike rule. Exactly. Let's talk more about that video, Dylan. The footage shows there was some build up to the attack. What did both men say happened? Well, this was a situation where uh, the victim in this case was trying to get into uh, a city building that you have to have a work badge in order to enter. I don't know if he had been in there earlier and sure. was trying to get back inside. He claimed that there was some property of his inside and was tugging on the doors, yanking on them, trying to get inside. Berlanga said he was coming back from his lunch break, witnessed that, asked him if he needed any help. Uh, the man cursed at him, according to both parties, and it escalated from there within a couple of minutes. What do we know about the man, the victim? He does have a criminal history, and that is something that the city has sort of pushed back on. They think that is uh, a critical part of the story. I will point out that these two men did not know each other when Berlanga pounced on him. So, uh, and I had even posed that on my Facebook page yesterday. Does it matter that the man that was pulling on these doors that got thrown to the ground uh, has a criminal history? And uh, viewers, some of them got mad at me for even suggesting that, even asking that, and wow. the, the resounding response was, no, it doesn't matter. This is a person who got thrown down twice, kicked in the rib cage. Uh, it doesn't matter who he is at that point. Now, the reason we waited a day for this debrief was because you were in court with the suspect from last week's investigation, that radioactive raid in Guadalupe County. Tell us what happened there, Dylan. Yeah, yesterday we got our first look at Gary Albro. He's been in custody in Guadalupe County for almost a year. He was sentenced to 12 months plus one day for a federal firearms charge. He'll also be under community supervision for three years. Uh, last June, he was found with hundreds of pieces of identifying information, books on torture and radioactive material, including cesium, which is the most volatile metal on Earth. He had it in a lead-lined can inside a bedroom at his home. Uh, he faces a state trial scheduled for next week on uh, charges of theft from a nonprofit and fraudulent use of ID charges. Uh, he does not face charges for possessing radioactive material, including the cesium and collector's grade uranium, which I think is the most interesting part of this whole thing. Yeah, how's wow. that? I mean, uh, that, that, that's, that's stuff that we obviously don't want in, in anybody's hands outside right. of maybe a government control. My understanding is that possessing radioactive material is itself not a crime. How you obtain it can potentially be a crime. Okay. And from talking with investigators, I've made several attempts to talk to Albro himself. Uh, he's given no indication of how he got all of this radioactive material. So I think without having that information, it's impossible to charge him with possessing it. Wow. And, and with cesium, we're talking about something that with air, it explodes. Sure. Uh, reacting oh with goodness. water, it explodes. So th this isn't something that uh, you want out there in the public. Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, so many more questions for you, Dylan, but we're out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, right, of course. Great piece. Thank you so much.